The best combat unit in Fire Emblem Earthrites will pretty much always be using his sword. The developers definitely knew he was going to be amazing, so to make it just a little bit harder for him to trivialize the game, they built a lot of maps in ways that try to make the other weapon types more appealing. Of course, that still didn't stop Riemel from being able to easily solo the game, but where does this leave the game's other sword users? Hana has a stat distribution that lets her outspeed and kill pretty much everything in the game when she gets going. But this is Birthright, the game where this isn't nearly enough to make you stand out as a good unit, especially if you're stuck using swords. But there's still a lot more to Hana than just being a worse version of Ryoma. Joining me today to talk about all these possibilities is Bloog, an experienced Fire Emblem challenge runner with a YouTube channel full of cool clears. So let's get started. After you subscribe, of course. Hana is another one of the first units that you get in Birthrights, joining at the start of Chapter 7. Yeah, Hana is one of the most available units in the entire game, which is normally a pretty good thing. Um, and for her, it actually is. Yeah. Um, unlike Tsubaki, it is actually pretty easy to train her in the earlier maps because there's a lot of axe and bow guys, and she does get weapon triangle advantage over them because she is sword locked. <laughs> Dealing damage to Oni Savages is going to be pretty difficult, but you do have Rick Repair up if you're willing to use that on her. Her base strength of 9 is notably buffed from her in-game default bases, which are used in Rev. I believe she starts in Rev with 7 strength, yes. which makes her even worse, so Birthright is the better route for her to actually succeed in early game combat, which is not saying much because her early game combat in this game isn't very good either, thanks to her 6 defense. Yeah, she struggles pretty bad with, like, taking hits. She has really low HP, defense, and res. And she's... I, I think the idea is that she kind of get has that, like, mitigated by her high avoid, because she has really good speed. But, you know, fates is fates, so how, how far are you gonna go with dodge tanking? She does have the ability to double any unit that she really wants to. You can even get her to double the chapter 10 ninjas if you really want to. But the amount of damage she's going to be doing against things like ninjas or Oni Savages or even the generic archers that you're going to be facing is probably not enough to win around unless you have extra strength investments like a strength tonic or a rick of hair up. She definitely can start one rounding most things if she's invested in in chapter 7, which isn't very hard because she's one of the better candidates for investment in that chapter, but she still won't be super impressive killing all the things because her defense is still going to be held back by katanas, which just decrease her already low base by one, and the growth of 20% is not going to help her very much. Yeah, one notable thing about Hana though is that unlike most other early Myrmidon girls in the Fire Emblem series is that she actually has a strength growth. She has 65% in Myrmidon and her personal growth is actually tied with her speed. And she will very often, if you train her up enough, ram her cap. So she will eventually be able to start doing some like actually meaningful damage, which is pretty nice, but her start is kind of annoying. If you want a good player phase unit, Hana is definitely not your worst option. Being locked to swords is unfortunate because swords probably have the worst experience pool out of every non-bow unit type, but she'll still get by. I mean, yeah. with swords, she can still counter any units that attacks her from one range, which is a lot better than you can say about bow units. So she can, if you want her to, get more than one kill on any given turn. But it's still going to be more difficult for her than a unit with a real defense stat like Rinka, who can just walk into a group of enemies and kill them in a few hits. Well, Hana, you need to be careful about where you put her yeah you kind of need to really like rely as assuming that you are going to try and send her into a bunch of enemies you need to really be careful about like what type of enemies is she going to be fighting is she fighting any lances or any like neutral weapon triangle 
guys. If yes, uh, probably don't go in range of more than like one or two because it's likely that she won't be able to use her high avoid stat as a crutch and she usually won't be able to take more than one hit, maybe two. On player phase, she does get Duelist Blow, which actually does help her out with dodging a lot, especially on maps like chapter 13, 7, 8, anything where she already has naturally high avoid chances. She has maps where she is a lot more comfortable. She also notably has a pretty high resistance stats with a base of 9, which is probably going to be a bit better than a lot of your other physical one range locked units. That doesn't mean she matches up particularly well against mages. I mean, she does have Vantage and Kodachi access, but she is almost certainly not going to one shot mages that haven't already been shipped by another unit. It's kind of like Kaden. Like, Kaden is good at killing mages on player phase, but it's impossible to really make a player phase push to kill a mage unless you're already in their range, so at that point. Any unit can really do her job, so... If you want Hana to kill mages on enemy phase, you're going to need to like use attack stance, and at that point, the setup kind of becomes a little difficult for her, because otherwise, if she's not using attack stance, she'll have to one-shot it. And, um, <laughs> that's... Even with, a, like, a pretty high strength stat, one-shotting with a Kodachi is kind of hard. And also notably, enemies and Fates are aware of Vantage after the first time Vantage procs on an enemy phase, so the AI will choose to maximize damage and not go for her if they know they're, they're going to get killed before they are able to land a damaging hit. So they would prefer to go for her dual strike partner, which will just reduce the amount of experience that she gets and make it more difficult for her to keep up in the level curve if you choose to use her against mages. Yeah. One notable nice attribute that she has in her starting time is that she starts with D in swords, though. So she can immediately use the Kodachi if she wants to, which is very good because, as mentioned before, there's a lot of early game like bow units and she'll have weapon triangle advantage against them always. So it, it's a really good investment for her to just like go ahead and get a Kodachi. And then later on, she will eventually get C rank in swords because that's the only weapon she's using. There's kind of no excuse not to. And then she'll be able to use steel katanas, which Hinata comes with one for free. And you can take that from him and she'll be able to still probably double things with the steel katana even with the speed penalty because her speed is just so high. I do actually think that the steel sword is often slightly better on her just because it has, I believe it has one extra might and it also doesn't debuff her defense and resistance unlike katanas. That's actually true. I honestly forgot the steel sword existed for a second. Yeah. <laughs> you get one steel sword in birthright and it is on Silas's starting inventory so hana is probably the best user of it but it will take her a while to get to c rank swords because it requires her to be in 30 combats even if you're doing a lot of attack stats with her it'll probably take a while i don't foresee it happening until like the very end of chapter 9 if you're working towards it unless you do like paralog 1 and train hana there but you're probably not doing that her training is like kind of in a in a weird spot because like it, it it on paper does like sound really really easy but a notable thing about the fates uh, rng is that every single hit above 50 percent has a higher chance of actually hitting than what it's actually displayed as so hana's avoid rates aren't as good always as what it says it is. And that can cause Hana to get hit by more things that are like in the high 50s, low 60s, where you wouldn't expect her to actually like take too much, too many hits from, but there's a real chance that she will just instantly die. So you have to be very, very careful with how many enemies she really gets to fight, which can actually stunt her experience growth in both her weapon rank grinding and her experience grinding. And for those of you that play the earlier games of the series, hit rates below 50% used to drop off a cliff 
once you reach that threshold. They start going way down very fast. Below 50% in Fates is the accurate hit rates, while in the GBA games and every game before Fates, effectively, outside of the SNES and NES eras, hits below 50% are far less likely to actually occur in those games than they are in this game. So, even against enemies that she should have a very strong advantage against, like Oni Savages and Archers, her avoid rates are still not going to be very great when they're at like 40 or even 30 if you really try to work for it later in the game. The 35% HP growth and 20% defense growth really do her no favors. Like, her bases are serviceable in early game birthright where enemies don't really have stats, but once they do develop stats, It'll be hard for her to take more than one hit. Yeah. Really, her last, like, super amazing chapter with, like, her bases and her base class is, like, uh, I want to say chapter 13, because after that, it does start getting harder for sword-locked units. Also, Ryoma, he's there now. But it, do it does start getting a little bit harder, because there's going to be a lot more lance guys and a lot more, like, bulky paladins and, like really like the enemies are gonna have like a lot of like promoted stats and by this point all your units are probably around like level 15 still which probably some of them won't want to promote i don't think hana would i mean she can still accomplish tasks she can still hold the armor slayer and face weapon triangle disadvantage against armor knights i guess <laughs> rick is probably better at taking those out anyways she can technically hold the spear katana and use that for self-improvement in the faceless chapters and paralogs it won't really help your team very much just because she's still so frail that she will struggle to take more than one hit anyways so you will need a healer with her at all times and you will probably only have her see one enemy face combat or just player face combat. It's really not a great situation to be in. Yeah. If you can get her up to speed with the rest of your army though, in terms of like raw damage output, she is a pretty decent vantage user because she, of course, naturally starts in the samurai class line, which has the very notable sword fair and life and death damage stacking skills. Yeah. So she can do a lot of damage on enemy phase, even in just a single hit. So when you're using Vantage, you generally want to either be one-shotting or three-shotting enemies. And Hana is in this weird in-between where her strength is kind of just good enough to, with complete investment of all your resources, maybe eke out one-shotting everything if she's fully supported, but anywhere in between is where she really struggles, because then she actually needs to be taking hits, and Hana's stats are just not built for that. They're not there for that, yeah. It's... She she is a, like, like, like we mentioned earlier, she's, she's very good against uh, mages, because mages already don't have great defense, yeah. Um, so she can pretty consistently kill, like, um, you know, sorcerers or like strategists or even even probably the dark mages. But once we start fighting things like the very high HP berserkers or the very high defense wyvern lords, um, it gets a little scary for her. <laughs> yeah. And she does have the Axe Splitter, she might be able to one-shot those guys if she uses the effective weapon, but then she also loses out on being able to one-shot basically everything else, because effective weapons face a damage penalty against enemies that they are not effective against, and the Axe Splitter does not have the highest might to begin with, so taking an even bigger might drop and losing out on the ability to counter at two range really hurts her if she's going for one shots. Yeah, whenever she's like enemy phasing, it doesn't even matter if she's trying to go for the vantage one shot strat. You really just have to be like very controlled about who she's fighting. She really needs to pick her battles and you know, some enemies do have it worse than her, or some units 
have it worse than her in that department, but also a lot of units just have it better. Like, yeah. you know, Ryoma, who starts in the same class. And then just like any, like, Saizo's just gonna, like, have a better time enemy phasing things and more units with, like, more bulk will just have a better time generally. On top of being one of the hardest units to train, she also really doesn't have the best long-term prospects. It's unfortunate. Uh, mm. But her main utility is going to be in her pair bonuses. As a samurai, she is one of the few units that is able to give plus four speed while unpromoted. And she has a very early joining time, so you have that pair up for effectively the entire game which is very helpful. And in addition to plus four speed just by existing in a samurai, she also gives an extra speed point from C support. So she is the earliest unit you can get to plus five speed on if you can get to a C support, which is very yeah. helpful. It's, it's really good because in chapter seven, you get like Subaki who has pretty terrible speed yeah, or like Rinka. And then you can pair Hana with them because Kaze is probably busy grabbing the Seraph robe. So he's going to be busy and not paired up with anyone. And that'll allow Rinka or Subaki to start doubling things, which is pretty cool. The rest of her pair of bonuses are also nice. B rank gets her one strength, and at S rank she gets an extra strength and speed. So most physical units will appreciate that a lot. Yeah, she gives strength, skill, and speed, which is like kind of the trifecta of like ideal stats to get on pair up. And she she's really good with that because when she promotes, she can go into Master of Arms. And Master of Arms, yeah, it gives it gives a pair up of more strength, skill, speed, and defense. So it's a very, very good pair up bot class for her, and just a very good class for her in general. The total amount of speed she gives will go down, but generally by that point in the game where you're promoting Hana of all units, you'll probably not need the extra points of speed. Her personal skill is also if not really good, but at least kind of funny. It's Fearsome Blow, so when this unit initiates an attack that KOs a foe, adjacent enemies lose 20% HP. So this is... <laughs> it, it's funny because it does stack with Poison Strike and Savage Blow if you get them on her. Well, it doesn't even stack with Poison Strike because she needs to kill the enemy. <laughs> Oh yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, it only it, it stacks with Savage Blow, and I guess nothing else. <laughs> but that is that is an instant forty percent to all adjacent enemies when she kills a unit. The problem is she has to be adjacent, and honestly, in Birthright, there's not a whole lot of opportunities to kill an enemy and have Hana be adjacent to a second enemy. Yeah. There are a few select cases where that can happen. I know I have unironically used it before to reach a kill threshold, <laughs> um, but in most cases, it isn't going to really be very applicable. Yeah, the faster you play, the less likely it is that Hana is going to be adjacent to two enemies at once, generally you are going to be having a lot of combat happen on enemy phase, and Hana is generally not going to be active in that. And by the time the enemies are dead, well, she's not going to be in range of enemies, so it will be difficult for her to be adjacent to multiple after her five movements on player phase. Yeah, and it's especially annoying because enemies prefer to dual strike when they can. So even if enemies stay alive, they're going to be adjacent to each other, which means that when Hana kills something, she can't be adjacent to the other enemy because it's already right next to, like, like the the only space that she'll be able to really like have that have her personal skill be applicable um, is occupied. So yeah. it's a little annoying. And like, there are some instances of group A enemies near the end of the game where I guess it technically can be useful for, 
but you are probably not going to be sending Hana against the cluster of Great Knights and Bow Knights and Dark Knights. She probably won't survive to make use of her personal skill if you are putting her in that situation. <laughs> the the most applicable use I can think of for her uh, personal skill is in chapter 25, Iago's map. There's right at the start of the map, there's a bunch of like generals and a strategist. And oh, yeah. If you kill the middle general, then you can like kill the strategist with Hana and then ship the two generals of Jason to her, which is, I guess that's the most applicable point of the game, or most consistently applicable yeah. uh, point of the game where she. But can that use also it. requires you to spend a deployment slot on that map for Hana, which I guess if you're skipping the chapter is not the worst thing to do, and you do have to get through the middle if you want to skip. But if you're trying to get all the chests in that chapter. Hana probably is not the most valuable member of your team to be bringing at that point. <laughs> yeah. And even then, Birthright is a game that gives you three Sting Shurikens, I believe, and an Armor Slayer and a Hammer. So you're probably not hurting for ways to kill those three generals to begin with. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's like... Kind of just a funny option, yeah. Um, but yeah, generally her her personal skill won't really see too much use. It, it, it is a lot better than some, but it's, yeah. it's still not amazing. Is it even better than Pyrotechnics? At least Pyrotechnics can get Saizo into vantage range, while Fearsome Blow, uh... I guess, can maybe get her into vantage range against one or maybe two enemies. Uh, well, she doesn't take the damage herself either so yeah but at least pyrotechnics it, applies um, to a larger area while fearsome blow is true, only adjacent yeah. to enemies yeah she she effectively she just has worse pyrotechnics or worse savage blow um both of them have worse savage blow really <laughs> yeah but yeah it, it it's it's just kind of an unfortunate skill it does technically work if she is in a 1-2 range class though. So she can have more flexibility in her positioning for procking Fearsome Blow if she's killing something with a bow or a shuriken. So there is that. Or even the Kodachi. That's true, yeah. However, speaking of skills though, one thing that I think is really good for Hana is seal strength. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Hana has terrible defense. We have gone over this and she will very, very, very hard struggle to survive against the multiple rounds of combat with enemies. And the notable thing about Seal Strength is that not only is it in Master of Arms, which is a bulkier and stronger class, which Hana wants, but she also debuffs the enemy's strength. So after rounds of combat with an enemy, if she fails to kill, she can use like a concoction or something and she will heal herself back up to full HP because she has 20 HP at base <laughs> and she's probably not going to uh, get a whole lot more than that. And she will probably be able to survive like a big enemy base with this skill, which is, I think, valuable. Yeah. If you're trying to use her. It's... Generally more useful if she is staying either one range or Kodachi locked, because in that case, well, she kind of just can't kill the enemies that are attacking her at two range, and they will have to survive for another hit on the next turn, assuming she can't just kill them with vantage. But yeah, if she is in one of her one-two range classes, I don't see that having the most amount of value because her strength stat is good enough to be able to one round a lot of enemies to begin with. So if she's in like Maid or Mechanist, it will probably lose a lot of its value because she is one of the few physical units that can consistently start one rounding enemies with daggers. Yeah, especially if you decide to go out of your way to grab the damage stacking skills like if she goes into mechanist with ninja marriage she has natural access to life and death and shuriken fair and 
that's just a plus 15 damage stack and on top of her already very high strength she, she can probably even get rid of one or both of those skills and uh, she'll probably be able to consistently one round because she will double that's like yeah. a guarantee yeah I probably would not recommend Life on Death on Hana because unless you're one-shotting, which is still going to be difficult with Hana's strength stats without full all resources investments, she's probably going to die to the first thing that hits her. <laughs> yeah, especially if it's like a Great Knight or something at like Weapon Triangle Advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not be a great look for her. One notable thing about her stat line that I think we forgot to mention is she has really bad luck. Yeah. Her dodge is pathetic. It, it's like, I, I think it it's kind of worse than her defenses in a way because she will constantly be facing crit chance. And even with her poor defenses, she will still be able to like survive like one hit or two hits but if she gets crit those one or two hits get multiplied by three in damage output and she will just disintegrate yeah. um, and she will be getting counterattacks basically every combat that she's in so that is really not ideal yeah it's the in my opinion, whenever I'm using Hana, I think the best thing to do is kind of similar to if you want to use Arthur in Conquest, just give her one of the goddess icons. Yeah. <laughs> just to at least fix her dodge rates a little bit before you try to send her into any enemy phases. Still slightly better than Kaze, but that's not a very high bar. Yeah. I think, I think the worst part of her luck stat is mainly her base. Yeah. Because her growth is, like, it's, like, okay. 40% is on the, like, verge of being bad, but it's not, it, like, it's passable. But, you know, base stat of 5 is... <laughs> I should also note that 15% of that growth comes from the samurai class. So if she leaves yeah. samurai, things are not looking much better for her. And yeah. three of her luck base is also from samurai. <laughs> If you are worried about her low luck luck stat in terms of hit rates, though, she does have very high skill to mitigate that, yeah. which is pretty good because you know we've mentioned all these things about like oh she could do you know vantage one shotting or she could just like double and one round the enemies. A real worry about that for a lot of units is am I going to be able to hit the enemy? Hana usually will, <laughs> so. Yeah. And she notably has the benefit of using katanas, which compared to the other Hoshiden weapon types are the same accuracy as their Norian counterparts. So the brass katana does have 100 hits and the iron has 90. So she will very often have 100% rates against the enemies that she needs to take out, being like mages. So. It's very nice for weapons like the Axe Splitter too, which have pretty low hit in comparison to like the Brass Katana and like the Iron Katana, because, you know, a lot of units that want to use these effective weaponries, they will probably struggle with like the, the poor hit of these weapons, but Hana doesn't really care about that. The Axe Splitter still has 75 hit, so her chance to kill a Berserker in late game is going to be pretty high. Unfortunately, it comes with the side effect of reducing your avoid, which is not ideal if you want her to PC in combat against an enemy that will have a crit rate against her. But yeah, not the worst thing. So yeah, we've talked a lot about her usability in Samurai. Her reclass is pretty interesting. So she has Shrine Maiden innately, <laughs> and Omioji is bad. Don't go in Omioji if you are, you're throwing. But if you go into Priestess, uh, there is kind of some real, like, merit to that, because she'll get Miracle, she'll get Renewal, that's, like, survivability skills, and she really does like that. She's in the class with the best bases in the entire game, and then, on top of that, she'll get Bows. And in Birthright, you know, Yumi's get a lot of flack for their poor hit, 
But again, Hana doesn't care about that. She's actually a pretty decent bow unit because she, you know, bow units don't want to enemy phase if they're bow locked anyways. And she already doesn't want to enemy phase. So it's not the worst idea to have her go into Priestess, use the better bases, the free healing skill, even the rally, and then be able to be an accurate, strong, fast bow unit. It's not a bad option. Although competition for good bow units in Birthright is pretty fierce <laughs> when she's probably not going to be much better than Takumi. Like, she will probably mm -hmm. at least be able to double with the Brass Yumi, but her damage output still isn't going to be as good as Fujin Yumi Takumi unless she's pretty decently invested in and promotes pretty late. And there's also Reyna who can fly and also just has the same offensive profile as her with the massive strength and speed growths while having not much defense and resistance. But Reyna's defense and resistance spaces are actually kind of crazy for Kinchi already. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard to compete with her in particular. Yeah, and Reyna already has a free healing skill herself, so she doesn't really care about like going into Priestess to get Renewal when she can just, you know, heal herself. As well as already having an existing bow rank, which Hana will not. Yeah, that's the biggest annoyance with using Hana as a bow unit, or any other class in general, is that once she reclasses out of Samurai, she will be in E-rank Hell, like most other units out of their base class, which is not too amazing. I think one of the easy ways to kind of remedy this for some classes is have her go master of arms start building like i don't know a little bit of axe and lance rank for those classes but you know in a class like shrine maiden where there are no axes no lances no swords she will be stuck using a brass yumi for a bit i guess having control over the weapon triangle is nice from master of arms just because her avoidance won't be the worst so being able to have Weapon Triangle in most combats that she's going to be doing in player phase. On top of Duelist Blow will help her to get to sub 50 hit rates most of the time, but it's still not going to make her contribute that much more than any other filler combat units. That is probably going to be taking less damage than her on the occasions that she does get hit. I guess Sword Master does have the benefit of having extra avoid while being sword locked. She does have the ability to use the dual katana to further increase her avoid against blue units, on top of having access to Astra to kind of cheat death by procking it and filling up her guard gauge before she gets hit lethally. So, it's not the worst thing you can do with her, but... I have done, like, Swordmaster, Soul, Astra, Hana before <laughs> to try and, like, increase her survivability, and it's... Like, it does work, um... But, you know, she was still kind of just worse than, like, uninvested Ryoma or uninvested Corrin. Yeah. Her skill at least makes Astra kind of usable. Uh, she'll probably have like over 15, maybe like 20 skill by the time you get it. 10% proc rate isn't that bad, but not really something that you want to be relying on. In Sword Master, she will get Sword Fair though. And Sword Fair, I, I love the Fair skills. These these skills are awesome. It's it's kind of unfortunate that they're level 15, but you know. If, if any unit really has the opportunity to grab this skill, especially if they're in a low strength class like Samurai is or like Ninja is, then I will always try to like go ahead and grab this if I can because it's just it's just a nice safety net to always have, especially for a unit that's always going to be doubling. So that's five damage per hit and that's just an extra 10 damage for each round of combat overall. She will continue to be useful on player phase if she is invested in, but having a good player phase usually isn't enough to stay relevant in Birthright, unfortunately. For an enemy phase, I guess sort of an enemy phase class that she can go into from her base and friendship classes is made. Yeah. from Felicia. She will get two range, which is the one of the most valuable things to have 
in this game. And she will also get access to shurikens, which increase speed, which increases her avoid. And then later on, she'll get access to things like sting shuriken, dual shuriken, if you're really crazy, barb shuriken. <laughs> And she will do pretty well with these, especially on player phase, because she, now that she's no longer one range lock, you know, like she can attack basically from anywhere she wants. She does get helped a lot by the one two range of shurikens and the effective weaponry that shurikens provide are really good for what Hana kind of wants. She's also notably a pretty good user of Live to Serve because she will be wanting to heal back to full after every combat because she's going to be taking so much damage when she does get hit. So being able to use a staff and heal herself along with an ally saves you from having a healer constantly there to heal upon it to full before her next use. Yeah, and of course it would be wrong to not mention that She's able to go in Omiyoji, get Rally Luck, Rally Magic, Rally Resistance from Troubadour, and then she can marry for a fourth rally. So if you want Hana to be a rally bot, you know, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't recommend it, personally. Spending, uh, what is it? At the very least, two levels in a Magic Lock class is not great for Hana. I mean, I guess she can staff spam, but even that is going to be very slow when she's stuck using Bloom Vestals. It's uh, it's building her her staff rank for the big Garen hexing rod for high skill. Upwards. Oh God, <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> um, what, isn't the hexing rod B rank staves? So she needs to use it over a hundred times, right? <laughs> oh God. Uh. Her magic's low enough, she can <laughs> she can get there. <laughs> but yeah, the the most she'll probably get out of Troubadour is yeah, like live to serve from Maid and then, you know, Shuriken access and I guess Demoiselle. Her res is fine, she doesn't care really much about res plus two or tone breaker. It's probably one of her better options if you want to actually invest in Hana, just because other units probably want a ninja marriage a bit more than her and it still allows her to get further damage stacking skills through marriage, which she doesn't really get through friendship, unfortunately. Yeah, the only damage stacking skill she really gets from um, friendship is Quick Draw from Setsuna. She will get Bow Fair if she gets to level 15 in Sniper, which is fun, uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, like snipe, Sniper Hana is like, it's all right, it does work pretty well as like a player phase sniper. It's certainly a hell of a lot better than Setsuna is. <laughs> yeah. But as, as we said earlier, she will generally still be worse than like Reyna or like Takami even because, you know, she doesn't have a super broken personal skill or like really, really insane bases or, you know, a Fujin Yumi. <laughs> yeah. Putting Hana into Archer, I guess, could be a way to gain some bow rank before going into Priestess. Although, by the time you get Hana and Setsuna to A+, you will probably be wanting to promote Hana anyways, so eh, probably not the best use of your time or resources. Yeah, and the big thing about Sniper as a class in general is that it's kind of like a, a hit class, right? Like, it yeah. gives you skill plus two and certain blow. And these are like really big hit stacking skills, and like Hana just doesn't care about that. <laughs> like she likes the da she likes the player phase damage stacking from quick draw, but like a lot of people do. So it's like she's not really unique in that department. And she's going to be using the brass Yumi for the first 20 combats, anyways, which is going to be extremely accurate. So probably not super necessary to further booster hits. Yeah, uh, the real draw to Sniper Hana is simply that the sprite looks cool. <laughs> that is true. I guess she could go into Kinshi. Being a player phase unit in a player phase class isn't a bad thing. Kyle Dori works just fine, and I guess Hana can fill that role in the same way. But she still has to suffer through E-rank hell in both lances and bows, so probably not ideal. One one good map I want to to actually mention 
um, that I forgot to is Wolfskin Peak. Ooh. Um, this this map has a lot of mountain tiles, a lot of forest tiles, and a lot of forts and a gate tile. And uh, a lot of units will struggle really hard <laughs> with with hit rates. Like yeah. Obero and like even like Corin sometimes won't be like the best with hit rates. But Hana's skill is so high that she's one of the few units that actually have a pretty good you know chance of hitting the enemies in that map even if they're on like a fort or something and the reinforcements all spawn in like diagonals so <laughs> you know fear yeah fear some blow it could probably be <laughs> applicable there yeah and if you're worried that the wolf skin have actual stats they don't and there are dragon veins in that map that reduce all of their stats by four points so she will probably be able to survive at least two hits from the wolf skin in that chapter, even if you haven't been training her very much. Yeah, and she will probably one round, though, especially if they are debuffed by four points in every stat. She'll always double. She'll always probably just one round, especially if you decide to give her a lot of favoritism and train her up and maybe get her to derank in lances and like master of arms or something to use the beast killer it's a pretty solid option for yeah. her although she's going to be competing with a lot of your other units that also want to be using the beast killer in that map yeah it's probably the easiest way to get to level 20 by just using the beast killer in that map so if you want Hana to be that guy that takes all that experience, then be my guest. But you will probably have a bit of a harder time than raising nearly anyone else once you get to late yeah. game. Especially if she hasn't promoted by Wolfskin Peak, because then she's probably still in Samurai. And I think, um, can she even get into a... Yeah, she can get into a Cavalier, <laughs> I guess, oh. if she marries Silas real quick. True. Or Tsubaki real quick. But otherwise, she'll probably not be in a Lance class. So yeah, Hana does have the ability to get other classes through marriage. I think the one that stands out to me the most is Cavalier from Silas because it gives her access to damage stacking skills in Elbow Room and Defender, which she really appreciates. The extra 4 damage from that might be enough to get her to reaching one-shot thresholds once you fully invest in her, give her a Mega Forge Kodachi, and have her in Great Knights, which has the highest strength out of every sword class. Yeah, Hana really does appreciate Cavalier a lot. Not only does she get more damage stacking with Elba Room and Defender, she also gets the Shelter utility. Every unit is good with Shelter. And Paladin and Great Knight help out her bulk a lot, notably. Yeah. So even if you don't care about doing Vantage one-shotting or anything, or using Vantage at all, this is, like, her class. This is her enemy phase class if you want to use her as an enemy phase unit because Paladin and Great Knight especially I would say for her Great Knight is a bit better because of just like the higher strength and bulk and she doesn't really care about the speed cut too much. It will just help her out like a lot but even if you do want to go into Paladin instead it still gives her a lot better bulk than it she'll ever have in Samurai, and then she'll be able to keep her pretty high res. So yeah, like oh, overall, these are just like not terrible options at all for her, and she gets more weapon types out of them. Being able to be in a higher moving class to do things on player phase rather than being stuck at 5 or 6 move is very impactful. It lets her actually contribute rather than just picking off the stragglers that were left behind from a big enemy phase push. It still won't be the most impactful thing just because once you get later into the game, all the enemies are also going to be mounted, so she can't really outrange them and attack them when she's not already in their range. So not super ideal, but it is still always better to have more movement than to have less movement. I'd imagine that she might actually get some use out of, uh, what, what is it called? Armored Blow? Yeah. Um, because, because of the fact that her HP is still going to be pretty low, Armored Blow might help her out a lot, because even with 
bulkier classes. She's never going to be able to fix that low HP stat unless you give her Seraph robes. And, you know, it doesn't matter how good your defense is. If you're gonna be taking damage on enemy phase, you're gonna want some HP. <laughs> She's also not the worst user of Aegis because she has a real skill stat. So that halves the damage from things like bows, tomes, dragonstones, broth, rocks, and shurikens. And that is a skill percent chance to activate. So she will have a non-negligible chance of just reducing the amount of damage she takes from the enemies that will probably threaten her a bit. But yeah, overall, I think this is, dare, dare I say, maybe one of the better, um, if not the best, class for her to go in if you want to have her be like your standard, like, all right, go in, go double an enemy, and then like take two hits on enemy phase unit. Like, she's, she's just like a standard, as a standard like filler combat unit, she will do amazing in Cavalier. Yeah. Silas is actually one of her better marriage partners because Silas really wants the extra speed and access to Vantage if he really wants to go the hyper investment ninja route. So Silas is just going to be the natural partner for Hana if you're using both of them. She also really appreciates uh, Silas's bonuses to strength, defense, and resistance from his pair up. A lot of units do, but Hana appreciates it probably the most. Yeah, it's also nice because Silas is a very early joiner, as is Hana, so they can start working on their supports like super early on, and they'll likely reach their S support if you like super focus on it. They'll likely reach it by like around like chapter like 16 ish, or around like when units start promoting, which is pretty good. Another good option for her is Ninja. Ninja is, you know, just obviously one of the best, best classes in the game. Um, she gets access to Mechanist, which is higher bulk. She gets Shurikens, gets high strength. Later down the line, she'll get Shuriken fair access. Overall, just a generally good, like, class to, yeah. to be in. Like most units in the game, it is probably going to be her best class if you want to make her a carry. Just generally having access to shurikens can really do wonders for your long-term viability. And Saizo does want extra speed. Sometimes Hana's extra 5 speed at C support can really make a difference in making Saizo do things that he otherwise really shouldn't be able to do. It would probably really help him starting to double the ninjas in chapter 10 which are the big speed benchmark that he needs to reach. Overall, like, Mechanist for Hana is, is like, effectively everything we said about Maid. Take that, and then give it better stats. <laughs> yeah. And bows. She won't really get too much use out of, like, Yumi's in Mechanist if you go that route, because, like, most units won't really care about it too much, but she is still a solid option for Yumi's if, you know, like, it calls for it. And if you want to keep her sword rank, you can go in Master Ninja to use swords, but honestly, I don't really recommend that. Speaking of sword classes that I really wouldn't recommend, Blacksmith. <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, it gives her access to a class that has good skill, decent bulk, but it really doesn't do for her much that Master of Arms wouldn't already do. And the skills that she gets from it are Salvage Blow, which procs based off her terrible luck stats, and Lance Breaker, which she does appreciate, but it really shows up just too late for a unit that you probably aren't going to be getting the most experience in. Yeah, she is unique in the fact that she is going to, like she's she's one of the few units that can get Oni Savage without Rinka. Yeah. Which is in on paper really cool because, you know, Oni Savage, you know, in these discussions we've talked so much about how good this class is. It's just not what Hana wants though. You know, in in Oni Chieftain, she'll be like she'll have axes and tomes, and like she can use axes pretty well, but she'll be stuck in E rank hell. She'll be a terrible tome unit. She has a base magic of zero, and honestly, she probably like she can use death blow if you use like 
great club or killer axe with her um, which both require well. c rank by the way so it'll take a while to yeah get there. It, it'll take a while to get there and also like Hana's probably, like, her strength is fine enough to where she'll probably be one-rounding anyways. Yeah. So, like, why would you try this? Oh, but counter! She's going to be taking so much damage from physical hits that counter will do something. <laughs> that's true, that's true. However, you know, her... <laughs> again, her high strength is just gonna be, like, like... In most cases probably going to just negate all the damage that counter's done anyways unless somehow she like fails to one round something i i guess i guess if she's not using like, an effective weapon against like a general or something or like a super high hp berserker in this class she'll struggle a bit though in a vacuum i guess pairing her with hinata is not the worst thing to do because hinata does appreciate extra speed and if you really want to, you can reclass Hinata with a heart sealed to Oni Savage to give her boosts in stats that she really needs, which are strength and defense. But that also comes with the unfortunate side effect of pretty much removing the ability for all of your other units to get access to Vantage through Marriage, which really is not ideal. You'd have to be giving up Riyama Marriage to give Vantage to someone, which uh, you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> So, yeah. The most common pairing for Hana is probably Sky Knight with Subaki, but that's more just to get Keldori. Sky Knight is pretty bad for her. She doesn't. It makes it makes her bulk even worse <laughs> than it is in like other classes, like Master of Arms or like Cavalier would. And you know she does not care about the speed. <laughs> like at all and that's like really all the sky knight is about it's speed and res which she already just has enough of the only thing that's like pretty good about these classes for her is the fact that she gets lances and lances are pretty good with the you know guard naginata and beast killer especially guard naginata for hana but you know c rank and d rank when she's stuck in e rank hell for a bit with like probably doing like one times two damage <laughs> it's not gonna be amazing she's one of the few units that has enough strength to make the guard naginata kind of work but when you get later into the game where enemies will have two range options she will pretty much be unable to make any real forward progress it's really not great which is true for basically all guard naginata users but Hana, in particular, has to actually work to get access to the Guard Naginata. First getting access to a Lance class, and then getting to C rank, which will take 50 combats. So, yeah, not ideal. Honestly, for the rest of these, it's, it's less so what they give to Hana, and it's more what Hana gives to them. Because Hana is a female in Birthright that gives Samurai, and that is pretty good. <laughs> you know, she can marry, like, Azama, who would like Vantage if he's doing, like, you know, high strength, like, Vantage Mechanist if you really want. Um, Which gives her a third <laughs> way to access the Shrine Maiden class line. Yes! My favorite! Um, yeah, she can she can marry Jacob. We've already gone over why why Jacob wants Hana, so <laughs> but um yeah, he can do like um you know vantage, life and death, one shotting really easily with Hana marriage. Even units like maybe like Subaki or you know Takumi, they they may appreciate having vantage available decently well though i guess those two already have other ways to get it and one thing that i do want to mention about hana is that she is a crazy mother for a lot of <laughs> gen 2 units she gives a lot of strength and that that is pretty good for a lot of gen 2 one notable one is like mitama and like keldori and honestly maybe even asugi Hana mo mothering those three are setting them up for pretty good success. 
if you're trying to mother a child that you want to be a super enemy phase juggernaut, maybe not the best to pass down 20 defense growth and no defense inheritance, but if you want someone that is useful for utility or support and is probably just going to be getting one player phase kill per turn, then yeah, Hana is an extremely good mother. She notably does have a fast support with Tsubaki, so if you want to just rush to Kyle Dori and get the sword catcher as soon as possible, that is an option. <laughs> yeah, and the sword catcher, you know, there's there's a real reason to why you would want to get this early. Uh, not only does Kaldori's paralog have a lot of super like high level promoted enemies that are just like way above the level curve, even for paralogs. She will also be able to help you get the sword catcher before chapter 12. And in that map, you fight Xander, and Xander is a very, very, very bulky unit. <laughs> if you want to kill him, having effective weaponry is probably the best option, because the other ways to damage Xander are the Dragonstone, or, you know, like a Tome, or maybe the Fujin Yumi. But, you know, those three options kind of get negated by the fact that Xander has Aegis. <laughs> yeah. Looking at her marriage and friendship options, the most tragic thing that I discovered when doing research for this video is that it is impossible to do something that I really want to do with Hana, which is the Omni Blow setup. It is impossible for her to have all of her skill slots filled with skills that have the word blow in them. It's so sad, because Hana is the only unit in the game that you can truly do this with, because she has the skill Fearsome Blow as her personal. It's so sad. Yeah, she gets Fearsome Blow, and then there's there's a whole lot of skills that have like blow in the name. She can get Certain Blow from Setsuna Friendship, which is a second one, and then she also has Duelist Blow, which is a third one, and then... Um, she still needs, like, three more to fill all the skill slots, and unfortunately, the only class that she'd be able to get even close to that is Oni Savage, where she can get Death Blow and Salvage Blow, um, which will still- She can also go into Sky Knights. Oh yeah, true, true. To get Darting Blow and Warding Blow. Yeah. But it is impossible for her to get five of them in one single save file without doing unit logbook shenanigans, even with corn marriage, which is very sad. Yeah, all thanks to the stupid shrine maiden heart seal. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is a funny, if you're allowing logbook, it is a very, very funny thing that you can do. But, you know, even even in Revelation, it's, it's just impossible. Meanwhile, Tsubaki is just chilling there, having access to six blows. <laughs> while Hana is stuck with four. It's so sad. Like, I think even Ryoma has access to six blows, too. Clearly this means Tsubaki's the second best human in the game. This is true. Also, one thing I want to note is that this is not a birthright build, um, unless you use Korin Marriage, but in Revelation, she can marry Laszlo, and she can get Soul. <laughs> so she can do Soul Renewal Good Fortune Vantage Astra, and then she can <laughs> friendship for Felicia for 1-2 range access, unrestricted 1-2 range. And it is one of- uh, I've done this before. It's one of the most fun builds I've ever done in this game, and I really recommend it if you want to at some point. If you ever play, you know, Birthright or Rev and you don't know who to, to marry off to Corin or Laszlo, go Mercenary Talent and, uh... Her skill stats is very real, so soul procs will happen. Unfortunately, she can't get quixotic through that skill routing just because it would require diviner marriage. But having the ability to proc those skills at 1 2 range while having the skills that, sh that she does, it can make her survivability go from non existent to probably as good as your other units. Yeah, yeah. it's. It's funny. It, it's. It's. <laughs> She'll she'll do okay. Um, you know, when I did it, she she did she was capable of completely like soloing maps like chapter twenty four and, and and twenty six and nice yeah like you know like 
any unit with like soul and renewal and like a bunch of these healing skills, they will do fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter what their yeah. defense stat is, they will be okay. So yeah, Hana is certainly usable on player phase, but that generally doesn't make a unit particularly good in the context of birthright. So if you want to make an enemy phase Hana, you are probably going to be doing it through Ninja Marriage like most units, and when doing that, she actually doesn't look to be the worst at doing this. She does have natural access to Vantage, which means that she requires less investment to become a Vantage Ninja than some of the worse units in the game that need to both marry for ninja and get vantage in some other way. So she does technically require one fewer heart seal to become a vantage ninja than Saizo. She is a decently low investment like vantage ninja than than Saizo or Kaze or even Kagero. And honestly she she's like she's like a better Kaze and maybe a better Kagero because like she has very high strength very like high speed and and hit rates and even her HP isn't the like total worst yeah. <laughs> as long as you give her an HP tonic at least yeah. meanwhile you know Kagero kind of struggles with her hit rates Kaze kind of struggles with his defenses and strength output kind of just has the attack that Kaze so desperately wants, while still having the speed lead over Saizo that Kaze already has, while still being able to be in Mechanist, which does help shore up her defenses. She only gets to 13 compared to Saizo's 19 in Master Ninja, which is very sad. Having minus 6 defense really hurts the amount of enemies that she can take on during a big enemy phase, especially if you're prolonging combats to two rounds, but she will probably have the ability to win rounds if she gets like a good pair of partner or a tonic or rallies. So she is probably going to be decent at making forward progress, especially when she has enough weapon rank to reach the Steel Shuriken and its forges. I would say that her biggest flaw here is still her luck stat, honestly because she will, without a goddess icon, she's probably always facing crit. It's kind of the same deal as Kaze, where it's like, you will have very low bulk and high res, but like, you know, you're facing crit against almost every enemy, and you know, you're already not gonna be able to take too many hits at once, so a crit is just completely devastating for her if that happens. But otherwise, it is a solid option for a player phase mechanist, and even in some situations, maybe an enemy phase mechanist. This does come with the implicit assumption that Hana is reaching level 20 before promotion, and being a sword locks unit in birthright, that will require quite a bit of favoritism, or just waiting it out until you get to the faceless maps in chapter 18 and 20. Getting her here is probably going to be quite a bit more difficult than getting your other mechanists to this point, especially since you also need to raise her support with Saizo, who is probably going to be better than her for most of the game, so he will probably be seeing most of the combat up until you get to the grinding chapters where you're just getting her there for self-improvement, but she can get results, she can be a enemy phase unit if you are careful in making sure that she doesn't die by things like stacking defense with a rally and tonics and a good pair up. And she can one round some enemies that Saiza will not be able to once she is invested enough. One of the greatest things about Hana is that, you know, her high speed and strength will allow her to use things like Steel Shuriken very, very comfortably, while still being able to, like, one-round enemies through doubling. So, her damage output, it can do amazing things. <laughs> as long as you're careful, she will, she will do just fine. She won't be your best unit, but she'll be far from your worst. And 
I'd say this is better than a decent amount of units that we've seen so far. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, a lot of units in this game are in a pretty rough spot. And you would think that Hana is in, like, one of the worst <laughs> spots because, you know, she's contesting with Ryoma in her base class. But honestly, she she can do fine. She yeah. She's... You know, there, she definitely outshines a lot of other units than, you know, <laughs> some others, so... She's still clearly in the class of units where you're using her because you want to use her, not because she's the best at what she's doing. But if you want to use her, then yeah, the results will come. She does still face competition from, well, basically everyone that is good at anything that she does. Even in her sword locked state, she faces fierce competition from Caden, who comes with extremely real stats, who is also locked yeah. in a one range locked class. If she wants to go into bows, she kind of just is a worse Reyna, unfortunately. And if she goes into maid or ninja, she is still going to be a much higher effort project than your other carry candidates. But if you want to use her, it probably won't go terribly. Alright. Is there anything you want to add? Is there anything you want to plug? Um, yeah, I mean, Hana is one of my um, favorite units to use in this game. Um, I'm gonna be honest. She's not my favorite character was but she is just kind of a fun unit um and i think that she definitely gets a lot more hate than she kind of deserves um even if her stats are like less than desirable um i do have a channel uh where i am doing a birthright playthrough where i don't use any uh round of combat with uh the pair up mechanic um which uh, completely bans like paired up stats, the guard gauge, and everything involved with that. Um, however, I am still allowed to pair up for like movement tech. Um, and as part of that challenge, I wanted to get every single unit from the first and second generation married. That does include Hana. Um, and while I have already gotten her married and um, gotten her kind of like uh, put in the back burner of the units that I need to bring. Um, she did do pretty well uh, in the times that I did bring her, and I did get her to shine in a couple spots, like Wolfskin Peak uh, in chapter 15, or chapter 15 and chapter 13. Um, she did pretty well in there. Um, and also, I have a video <laughs> where Hana one rounds Garen in endgame without the hexing rod, <laughs> which is uh really funny um so if you want to see that go, definitely go check it out yeah you said that we definitely wouldn't get to an hour and a half with hana we got awfully close <laughs> um you know maybe i talk too much <laughs>